All right, friends, we have Easter right around the corner and you guys know the drill. You go to church with your family, then you come home, then you're slaving in the kitchen and everybody's hungry. Let's get some things in the crock pot before we even head to church, making it even easier. Now I know you can obviously cook a lot of things the day before, but in this video, we're specifically doing crock pot things. Actually, stay tuned because I also have some Easter recipes coming that are not crock pot. So if you wanna do some other things, that's gonna be the video for you. We're gonna start with some crock pot fried apples. They're not really fried, obviously. These are honey crisp apples. You need about three pounds or so of these apples. I thought I had an apple thingy. You know, the corer and the slicer. So you start the process. These are so good, by the way. If you've ever had these, I think it's Cracker Barrel that has the really, really good fried apples. Kind of like that recipe, really delicious. So much flavor, everybody enjoys these. I'm gonna skip past this portion where I'm literally just going to be peeling apple after apple. Now, if you have an apple, one of my friends had a machine where you stuck, like you, put it on the counter and you crank it and it peels and cores the apples, that was amazing. I don't have anything like that. So this is gonna be old school today. We're just gonna use our regular vegetables peeler and get these things done. Now we cut our recipe down quite a bit, but feel free to make more. We just don't need all of the uh, amount that the recipe calls for. I'm going to cut these into slices, kind of slices. They're about a half inch thick maybe. Just, you know, whatever your preference is as far as those go. One thing I do like to do is make sure that all the, like the tough place where the seed was, I like to cut that out. I just don't, I don't like that. When I get a bite of that in these apples, in the comments, tell me what is your Easter tradition? How do things typically look for your family? Do you guys go to church together in the mornings? Do you have people over in the afternoons? Do you make it dinner instead of lunch? Who all comes over? Is it a neighbor? Is it family? How do you guys do that? I just wanna know what's your tradition. Now I am using tapioca flour in place of cornstarch. We are gonna add one tablespoon of this. And because I'm cutting this recipe down, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is one of those like baking recipes that can be kind of, you know, so-and-so. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm adding about an eighth cup of brown sugar. And then we will also add about an eighth cup of regular sugar. About a half teaspoon of cinnamon. This is one of those that I would add however much cinnamon you like. If you like a lot more cinnamon, you really want that flavor, add a little more. And also about a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, a few tablespoons of butter. I'm using salted butter. You can melt it if you wanna kinda of mix it all in ahead of time. And then just around a teaspoon of, this is lemon juice. So easy, mix this together, just give it a toss. It's all gonna to come together in the crock pot anyway. It's gonna make its own juices, which is perfect. We are going to cook this on high for two hours until the apples are nice and tender and it'll be ready to eat. Literally, that's how easy this is. Let's put this insert into the crock pot and turn it on high. I think you could eat these apples as a side dish or even as a dessert. They just like dissolve. They just melt. They are so delicious, perfectly sweet. These were the perfect apples to use for these two. Very good. You would even eat that with a little bit of ice cream. Oh yeah, that would be delicious. Now, I don't know how you guys feel, but I can't have Easter without potatoes. So we are using these little petite, I think they're Yukon. <laughs> I think they're Yukon Gold, I'm pretty sure. We're gonna have these and then throw them into the crock pot insert. And then we'll add all of our yummy spices. I can eat potatoes every single day. I just love them. They are just, they are the side dish for me. I am a potato loving girl in every single fashion. I, I just, I love all, all of them. Not even just like yellow potatoes, not even just baking potatoes, all the potatoes. The bag I got is 24 ounces, so pound and a half-ish, right? I think the little red potatoes would also be really good with these. 
So um, I think you could go either way because same, same awesome flavors being added in. These just want to get away. Also could have used my smaller crock pot, but it's currently being, it's currently being used. Let's add about a tablespoon of oil. Oh, oh, that was close. I almost lost that butter. About a tablespoon of butter is being added. And then we've got some garlic here. We do wanna add a few cloves of garlic. Really good flavor in here. That's probably a teaspoon and a half or so of minced garlic. And then you can use dried rosemary, but I have fresh rosemary. That is no longer good. Cool. Well, that stinks. We're gonna use dried rosemary. Um, let's say a teaspoon and a half. I want them to have that good rosemary flavor, a decent amount of it. I'm gonna add salt, but because I'm a little bit extra, we're gonna add this truff salt. If you don't like truffle flavor, definitely don't use this salt, but we love it and I feel like it elevates these, I mean, next level potatoes, okay? So I'm gonna add the truffle salt because it is so good, so delicious. Start that toss, oh man, you can smell the truffle right away. I mean, it really does elevate these. Although the primary flavor that we're looking for here is rosemary, I do like to add a few additional things. Onion powder, I think is so delicious on these. So let's add around a half teaspoon or so, depending on how many potatoes you have in here. Thyme is so good, okay? Gotta have some thyme. You can use fresh thyme. I can pick it right off my garden right now, but this was, easily available and we already used dried and then some parsley just add a little bit of parsley i don't think that parsley has a ton of flavor but there is a different element of flavor that it adds but time that's gonna knock it up a notch okay now these oh my goodness you guys they smell so good now you can cook these on low for four to five hours or on high for one to two hours we're gonna go with low. We're gonna do low. I'm just gonna let them cook because we don't need them right now. So let's just put these into the crock pot and let them cook away. All right, with our potatoes, once those potatoes are done in the crock pot, you wanna top those with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. You can put some fresh parsley on there. It is gonna add the best flavor. So that is a great thing to do just right before you serve. You can let it melt in the crock pot or you can put it on top right in the bowl that you're serving in. All right, let's try these potatoes. Those are perfect. I mean, so good. I think that you can even make them crispy. This is something I did, I'm gonna talk about it in just a minute, in another recipe that I made where we wanted the top to be crispy on something in the crock pot. For the last 30 minutes, I took the lid and just set it off to the side so it wasn't all the way on the crock pot. And I think you could do that with these potatoes and get that same effect if you want that crispiness. But y'all, the flavor on these potatoes is phenomenal. Like that is what you want. You want to make those, they are so good. We're gonna make some slow cooker balsamic Brussels sprouts. And the first thing that we need to do is cut off this little end, okay, just a little bit. Then we're gonna cut them in half and I'm gonna put them directly into my crock pot insert. Now, while I'm doing this, I do wanna share that if you don't find your recipe in this video that you feel like, man, that's the one that I wanna make this Easter. I've got several other videos that you can check out. I will have them linked in the description box. I've got a crock pot video from Thanksgiving that has some amazing, amazing recipes in it. So check that out because you know, a lot of the same recipes apply to both Thanksgiving, Christmas and Easter, all of the above. Maybe you're not worried about it being in the crock pot. I have a video that I did last year of some Easter side dishes. And there are some really amazing ones in that one too. So don't miss that. I'll have that linked as well. Also, I've got more recipes coming out in the next week and a half. So stay tuned. If you haven't found your, your go-to Easter recipes yet, stay tuned. Don't worry, it's coming up. There will be plenty more. It has definitely been a spring season. It's it, We've had some really beautiful days and then we have some days like today that are just all day rain, every single, like all, every single hour, all day, just rain. And our yard is struggling to dry up because we've had rain and then we'll get two days of sunshine and then rain for another two days. And it is like a swamp. It is a swamp out there. It's just not, it's not fun to be out there right now. Okay, now obviously for this recipe, you can probably use 
Frozen Brussels sprouts, I always suggest though, if you're gonna be cooking these for a long time, don't go with the frozen ones. Just use the, the fresh ones that you get in the actual produce section of your grocery store. Those are gonna be the best kind for a recipe like this. And also, if you're not a fan of Brussels sprouts, I would say, are you cooking them the right way? Because if you're just steaming your Brussels sprouts or you're just boiling them in water, you're missing an opportunity to make this little vegetable so amazing. And I feel like a lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts because that's their experience. They just grew up, maybe they were just boiled in a pot and served to them on their plate, but y'all, I'm gonna make this recipe, but then there's another one coming up in another video and they are so good. Don't discount Brussels sprouts. It might be just the way that you've had them before. When we're actually cooking these in the slow cooker, we are just gonna top with a little bit of oil and a little bit of salt and pepper just to taste. And because I think that these flavors work really well together, here's my pepper, by the way. A Little bit of pepper. I do like to, again, add onion powder. I think it just, it, it, once we add the reduction, it just, all these flavors work together so well. A little bit of garlic powder. Make sure you flavor these up, okay? And then personally, I like to add a little bit of red pepper flakes. There's something about the balance of the balsamic reduction and the red pepper flakes that works together so well. So I like to add just a touch of that. That's maybe like a fourth teaspoon. It's really not much at all. Then let's toss all of this together. We're gonna put this over into the crock pot, the cooker part. I'm actually gonna put a little pat of butter here on the top. This isn't even quite a tablespoon of butter, but it just, you know, it helps the flavors, all these good flavors. Let me put this over into the crock pot. You're gonna either cook on high for one to two hours or on low, three to four hours. All right, so once these are done cooking, there's a couple different things that you can do. You can make a balsamic reduction, which basically is taking balsamic vinegar like this, take a little bit of brown sugar. I'll give you the amounts because we are actually gonna make this. You're gonna reduce it in a pot over on the stove and for about like six to 10 minutes and it just keeps reducing, reducing until you get a nice thick glaze. It's very delicious to do it that way. Now, if you want to go the really, really, really easy route, we almost always have this in the fridge. This is a balsamic glaze, which works so well with things like sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, figs, prosciutto, all things like that. I, we love having a balsamic glaze available because like with goat cheese, stuff like that, it's so perfect. Is this one even in date still? Yes, we're still good <laughs> this month actually. So this is one of those things that you don't use very often. Maybe you do, maybe you would use it more often than we do, but that's why I, I'll buy it if I know that we have something coming up that I'm gonna use it for just because I don't want it to sit in the refrigerator and go bad. I wanna say that this bottle is like seven or eight dollars just depending on where you get it. You probably already have these two ingredients in your house, brown sugar and balsamic vinegar. So it is really easy to make it, but if you know you're gonna use this on several different recipes, then it might be worth it to buy it and skip this step. Just my tip. For that balsamic reduction, we're gonna add about, I'm just doing a fourth cup because of the amount of Brussels that we have. I'm also adding a tablespoon of brown sugar. My heat is on a medium high. We're gonna combine this and really it just is going to reduce for about six to eight minutes. I will stir occasionally just to make sure that that, that sugar dissolves. It will come out to about the same consistency as the glaze that we have. And you can obviously use a much smaller saucepan than this. I actually was using my other one. My daughter and I just made a dessert recipe. So that one is not clean yet. And I can't clean it because the oil's still hot. So I'm using the larger pot, but I would typically use a much smaller pot for this. So this is what I'm talking about here. You can see how much this is reduced. And now it's not even covering the whole bottom of the pan. It's taking a lot longer to come together. It's more of that glaze consistency. That is what you want for the Brussels sprouts. Top those Brussels sprouts with that balsamic glaze that you made right before serving, right in that bowl, or even mix it in, in the crock pot, whichever your preference, but it is gonna add such good flavor. All right, Brussels. Perfectly cooked, love the balsamic glaze. The only thing I think it needs is just a touch more salt. Otherwise, I think they're very good. And I really love Brussels sprouts. So for me, this is a winner every single time in almost every way, except if you steam or boil them, not a fan. 
Brussels sprouts in the crock pot, smashed Brussels sprouts, which is coming up in a video soon, y'all, these are phenomenal. Making, shaving them and putting them in a salad, so delicious that way too. Very, very good. These are another one though, that with the flavors of the, the tiniest bit of red pepper flakes that's in there and the balsamic glaze, toss a little bit of grated Parmesan on the top and it's gonna take, it's gonna add another element of flavor, which is really good because that balsamic, because of the brown sugar, is sweet. And then you have that kick of the spice, but then you get the really saltiness and the like aged flavor of that Parmesan and that is so good. So that's what I would suggest on those two is if you wanna take it next level, that's, that's what I'm about to do. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I am actually not really a fan of ham. So I will eat ham in certain ways, like if it's in a stew or a soup or something, but I don't love the Easter Christmas ham deal. So we usually opt for corned beef instead, which is a favorite of mine. It's actually a favorite of our whole family. We love this one and it could not be easier to make. If you have the time to throw two ingredients in a crock pot and just set it to the side, you can make a corned beef, okay? So in this crock pot right here, this is 2.61 pounds. This is absolutely enough for our family. If we were having more people over for this specific meal, I would get a larger corned beef. Usually what we do is get one about this size for our family of four, and then the next day we'll make something like a hash or, or whatever with the leftovers. Also, your corned beef will come with this little seasoning packet right here. It's got all the things that you need to season your corned beef in here, okay? So you just open the packet and you just sprinkle it over the top. <laughs> it's so easy. I like to turn it, make sure I get the stuff all over. That's it, that's it. <laughs> The one thing about corned beef is that you cannot just cook this for a couple of hours. The longer you cook corned beef, the better it will be. This is not, I mean, I'm sure that you could leave this in here for like 20 hours and it's gonna get really overdone, but the longer it cooks, the more tender it becomes. So we usually cook it on high for around six hours, depending on the size of the corned beef. It's almost never that we cook a corned beef on low because I do think that it would probably take 10 to 12 hours. I'm gonna set this on high. We're gonna check it around five to five and a half hours and see about how much longer we think that it needs to go. But if you can't stick a fork in there and immediately just gently pull some off, it's not done. If it falls apart like that, then you are good and it is gonna be so delicious. The timer just went off on the uh, corned beef. So this is five and a half hours. Let's check it and see if it falls apart. Now we've got the fat on the top, so we gotta get below that because obviously that's gonna fall apart. This is the part down here. We wanna make sure it easily pulls off. Oh, it's actually telling me it's done right now. Okay, calm down. And that is exactly what you wanna see. I gave no effort and it's completely just pulling right apart. Corn beef is so delicious, friends. If you have not tried making your corn beef in the crock pot, highly suggest that you do. It comes together perfectly and you don't have to do anything. You're just throwing it all in a crock pot and it will shred apart and be so nice and tender. If you're looking for more crock pot recipes that you can make for Easter, I'm gonna insert this video right here. Even though it says Thanksgiving recipes, these definitely translate to Christmas, Easter, and all the other holidays that you might be having people over for. Highly suggest that you check that one out. Also, I mentioned a recipe where we left the lid off of the crock pot to get a crispiness on the top. You need to check out this video right here. This is going to be your Easter dessert. It is a crock pot apple crisp and it is so delicious. It's the best apple crisp we've ever had. If you want a good crock pot dessert, you gotta check out this one right here. Our verse today comes from Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around. I've got lots more inspiration and more encouragement in the kitchen here on my channel. Check out the video that I have posted right above here. This is the one you should definitely watch next.